Are you like me and you suck at sleeping? Hi, my name is Janelle and today I'm doing a slightly vulnerable video. I am going to share with you guys my tips and tricks for being able to sleep through the night and generally how I've slowly... Sorry, my cat is really loving the attention today. Basically, I've struggled with insomnia since I was like, I wanna say six or seven, I'm not really sure. As a child, I struggled a lot with night terrors and sleep paralysis. So if you guys don't know what sleep paralysis is, it's essentially when you kind of unintentionally wake up during a REM cycle. During this, you can't move your body. During sleep paralysis, some people experience seeing like, hallucinations or being still in a dreamlike state. And Unfortunately, I am the type of person that gets these weird nightmarish hallucinations during sleep paralysis episodes and I still struggle with them. I think one of my more horrifying sleep paralysis episodes was when in my old bedroom when I was 16, there is a girl in front of me in my bed and she, her back is faced towards me. Her hair looks like mine and she's wearing the same pajamas that I wore when I fell asleep. In this particular sleep paralysis nightmare, the girl in front of me that is basically my clone, she's like slowly turning her head around. I woke up screaming. So yeah, that's an example of one of my many horrifying sleep paralysis nightmares. I'd also developed a fear of death when I was like eight years old, which in turn slowly developed into a fear of being generally unconscious due to the fact that I also struggled with having night terrors and sleep paralysis and the fear of death. They all kind of just coagulated together into one mess called insomnia. <laughs> As of recent, I can now proudly say that 30% of the time I could sleep through the night, which is such a godsend. To you people that sleep through the night 100% or 90% of the time, good for you. Some of us can't relate to that. Managed to figure out the most effective way for me to appreciate sleeping for what it is instead of as something that brought me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> if you also suck at sleeping, you will probably appreciate some of these tips to learn how to get yourself into the headspace of things. So yeah. So one of the ways I figured out to remain to side sleep is kind of cliche, but bear with me, this actually worked for me. It is actually investing in really good nightwear. Feeling cute for the evening just made me feel a lot better about sleeping. Allowed me to be able to romanticize it like an actress pretending to go to sleep in a movie scene in their cutesy little matchy matchy pajamas. That makes me feel better. So good quality nightwear. Let me show you some of my favorites. This is a set I bought at Marshall's the other day and it's so cute. It is baby pink and it was only like $24. Legs get hot but my arms get cold. So this outfit is actually ideal for me. And you're probably thinking, Janelle, how does this make you sleep better? It really doesn't, but it makes me look forward to it. And that's all that matters. This set is also from Marshall's. Super, super cute. I love this. It's so soft and it was only like $14, which is not bad. If you get a really cute pajama set. How can you not find sleeping cute? How can you not romanticize going to sleep? For some of you guys, it may not be the pajama set. It could be like an evening cocktail to each their own. For me, this is what it is. This pajama set, my mom finds super ugly, but I don't care. I got this from Kmart before it closed down. This is so comfortable. I look kind of like a toddler. This is like wearing a blanket. That's why it, this is probably my favorite pair, even though I have much cuter ones. The next step is to create a realistic evening routine. I'm not telling you guys to be like, oh, no phone use two hours before bed and waking up at five in the morning just so you could exercise or whatever, I don't care. Create a very realistic sleep routine that will keep you doing it every single day. My realistic sleep routine is taking a shower before I go to bed and of course doing skincare and all that stuff. Because if you create an unrealistic one, you're bound to fail. You're setting yourself up to fail. Because if you keep getting mad at yourself for not following this very specific, very strict routine, then you're kind of just gonna fall back into the same patterns. Keep it realistic and short. So I'm actually gonna go take a shower now. Shower. I 
was supposed to turn on the AC before my shower, but I lucky forgot to do that. So let me go turn on the AC. There we go. Nice and cold. It's gonna take a while for it to like fully kick in, but yeah, this is good for now. Let me go put on tonight's pajama choice. This is the pajama choice. Very cute. They're actually from H&M. My mom bought these for me. Now, time for skincare. I actually decided that instead of taking a melatonin tonight, I'm just gonna raw dog it. So, number one, melatonin. Lots of people use melatonin. It's a very common over-the-counter, essentially, that helps you stay asleep. There's a lot of misinformation spread online about melatonin, especially by those of you who are chronically on Facebook for some reason. Believe that melatonin is bad for you. Let me just tell you something. Melatonin is a naturally occurring, I guess, chemical in your brain. Sort of the thing that tells your brain that it's sleepy. It's sort of like how ghrelin is the chemical in your brain that tells your body that it's hungry and then there's leptin leptin is actually the chemical in your brain that tells you it's full which is how things like ozempic work which is essentially a medication that mimics how that hormone works for your body anyway i'm getting sidetracked here a deficiency of the melatonin hormone in your brain leads to insomnia that was my little psa for those of you that are chronically on facebook okay yeah, there's also some people that choose to take Benadryls. I don't recommend taking an antihistamine to fall asleep. I know it does have a sleep-inducing effect. It can cause your body to develop a resistance to antihistamines, and this could be bad if you have any particular allergies. Do not take Benadryls to fall asleep because I need them for my shrimp allergy. A lot of people on TikTok and stuff, I even used to make these, make these little, um, sleepy time mocktails tart cherry juice and mix that with some seltzer water and a spoon of magnesium powder and it could help you sleep through the night i stopped doing that because cherry juice is sort of expensive it was kind of effective for me that is pretty much all of the more i guess practical ways of falling asleep as you may be able to tell i have a huge load of laundry that i need to put away now in order to prepare my brain for it to be able to i guess transition it from being in awake mode to being in sleepy mode I'm gonna be listening to an audiobook to prepare my brain for my usual routine of reading before I go to bed I actually finished an audiobook today at work. I finished reading Good Omens and I loved it so, so much. Here is my Goodreads review to help convince you to read it as well because I think this is probably my favorite book right now, which I say about every single book I have just read, but I think it's because I just love reading so much that I low-key feel like every time I read a book, I'm just like, wow, it's so good. I should have a more constructive view of books, but it's really hard for me. Pajama shirts. I usually read before I go to sleep, whether it's reading a physical book or reading fanfic. It just helps my brain get into the zone of things. My method of helping myself not get anxious before sleeping is by filling my brain with as much media as possible so that way I can't possibly think about getting anxious. Like for example, every night when I fall asleep, I always play white noise. Either that or I listen to an audiobook to fall asleep. So if you too have a very active brain, just literally jam it with as much information as possible and it'll help distract your brain and hopefully cause it to shut up so that you can fall asleep. I forgot to mention, I listen to either podcasts or watch interview shows, which I mentioned in my last video. I love listening to Dish. The podcast and it's also an interview show on youtube uh by se creative studio with angel hartnett and nick grimshaw it's such a soothing show and they are just such sweet hosts that i love listening to them talk yeah try doing that i've also had a lot of friends tell me that they watch asmr to fall asleep as well doesn't work for me but works for a lot of people so i highly recommend that as well actually instead of listening to an audiobook i'm just gonna be listening to this dolly alderton episode of dish so that way i could stay calm i guess get myself into the headspace of going to sleep while i fold my laundry so these books sit on top of bestseller lists everywhere she also loves the dinner party we love her thanks so much for having me fabulous yeah, just just slither a tiny bit yeah. off now that my laundry is put away it is now time to set up the ambiance so from my research red lighting is the the color red actually helps you fall asleep while cool tone colors like 
let's say purple or blue lighting it is gonna make your brain think it's not supposed to go to sleep at that time so i highly recommend using red lighting because it's helped me especially on nights when i don't feel like sleeping in the darkness let's just turn this on there we go lovely my lighting cocktail is actually turning the smaller lamp on into a nice purple shade now this makes such cozy dreamlike lighting to top it off we're gonna light my favorite candle at the moment which is fireside flannel from target also i love this little candle lighter it's an electric one you could just recharge love this okay and if i'm really feeling it i spray this stuff on my pillows my water bottle is always filled with ice cold water because I can't fall asleep without it. Tonight's book of choice is going to be Normal People by Sally Rooney. I also really want to watch the show, but since I just finished Good Omens, I think I'm going to start watching Good Omens sometime soon. I heard very good things about Sally Rooney. So I have high expectations going into this. Oh, another great investment I really recommend is getting a heating pad if you get cold at night like me, because I'm anemic. Wow. wow. Alexa, play white noise. Volume 5. That's the ideal background noise for me to be able to sleep, or at least fall asleep without having any like rampant thoughts going through my mind. If all else fails and my brain is still really active, I like to jot down a quick diary entry. I don't do it very often. Jot it down either in my notes app, but personally I prefer putting pen to paper and just writing it down in my notebook. So I really recommend doing that as well. I'm just gonna try my best to go to sleep now. I'll see you guys next week and I will let you know if I slept through the night. Anyway, love you. Bye. Good night, toodles. Come on, work.